today I'm going to bring you along on a little photo trip but it's going to be a little different than usual uh, as you can see behind me now there are uh, we can start with that some big boulders and uh, those boulders here they were part of the German defense of uh, this fortress they released the wires and the big boulders then fall down in the road and kept the tanks and the bigger truck uh, away from the fortress that we are uh, hiking up to and it's about three kilometers i'm also thinking of doing the photography in a timeless style i did some photography yesterday a quick one and i did a black and white one and i kind of like the style so uh, i haven't been uh, doing a lot of that so i'm going to try that today i think you can see up there already a bunker in the in the mountain so let's see if we can get past this crap it's been raining heavily the last day so it's pretty wet outside today it's a beautiful day and uh, let's hope it stays that way I think it's closed I also think today that I'm going to shoot most of my photography in aperture priority. That means that I control the depth of field and the camera uh, takes the shutter. There's a nice surprise in there. Watch the photo. Tell me what you think. Let's talk about the road that I'm walking on. This road is three kilometer long. It was built in three weeks. Try to do that today and see how far you can get. Uh, I think you know now, but uh, uh, what I said in the beginning of uh, the German boulders, this place was built by the occupying war machine, Germany. Uh, and it started in June, late June uh, 1942. This area was manned by around 2000 war prisoners who built this road by hand. So we walk here today, asphalt, nice, you can drive, you can walk safely up and down, but all the destinies and all the death that uh, belongs to this stretch is, uh, I think, immense, it's big. And uh, I think we don't think about that uh, when we walk uh, on uh, historic uh, areas sometimes. That's why I mention it. If you see all the rocks on the side of the road here, this is the original road that the war prisoners had to throw and build the road with. So uh, maybe this trail here on the side is uh, the history trail of the war prisoners that marched up and down to the fortress area every morning. Because the war prisoner camp was uh, outside the fortress area. Such a beautiful day today as well so it was a perfect time to uh, do this video. Finally reached the top here is the main gate and uh, I think we have to go in here. Old ammunition. Uh, I'm not sure if you can see but this is the map of the area. It's a big big area. And it's time to explore the huge area of Fjall Fortress. It's uh, nice with signs, tells you where to go. And I think there is a map here as well, an overview. So you can actually see how big this area is. Maybe it's a little dark, but you can get an impression. And we are here, the red mark. This one was most likely a guard post building or something like that because the gate is there. Maybe it looked a little bit different uh, during the occupation. They may had posts further down as well, but I think this was the main post. And maybe this one was the, the guard building. Kind of looks a little bit like it because of the the entrance area there, maybe it stood stood a guard there during bad weather. Yeah, maybe this was the haircut style they had to have in the, that time.
totally empty today. I've been here before and then it was uh, actually a lot of uh, clothes in here, but there's been a change in the ownership or the who uh, runs this place. So I think everything has been emptied out and uh, taken away. Down there as well, building from the old days. There is still a lot of trace from the from the from the old days, either during uh, the occupation and after. So it's interesting to to go and look and see how the things were, because we can't imagine how it was during this awful time. I think the Norwegian Armed Forces took over this area in 1953, I think, or 58, I'm not sure. And here we have, uh, I think, an old guard barrack, I think. It's logical because up there is the main gate. So I guess this is where they slept during the off time with the rotation of manning the, the main gate. But you can see the top of the ammunition up there. As a typical southwestern Norway weather, it's going to be cloudy one minute, rainy one minute, windy one minute. So bear with me if uh, the picture is a little bit dark sometimes because uh, there's actually nothing I can do about it. glimpse here maybe it's maybe too much reflection so there's a table some chairs and the interior is in wooden yeah, wood panel pretty amazing that such a peaceful area can carry a such a bad history and let it be with that uh, today is more of uh, me just relaxing making a documentary video taking some snapshots and you can make more of it I can make a better composition for sure uh, like hiding behind some some bush some flowers or something else to fill the the, the composition more but I think today the subject is uh, kind of dark, it's uh, black and white, so I think I want to make it simple. And uh, every time I am in a spot like this or making videos about this subject, my mood changes. So I, I'm just going to make it uh, very simple, black and white, as I said, timeless. So my photos hopefully can get you to get a little bit of feeling of how it was back in the days. Yeah. This is a little different video than what I normally put on my channel, but it is photography, a little bit history, a little bit me traveling around and exploring. But I think I need to open my bag and put on, yeah, put on some, some uh, lights so we can see what's going on here. Let's take a look here. Everything here is from the days of the occupation. So I think they maybe have cleaned out there. Ventilation room, I guess. When you think about all the years since this happened and the standard of the interior is still like this. The new concrete, that's for sure. So this door is closed. Maybe we can look inside. Well, it looks like they actually blocked it 
with this one so we can we can't look there used to be ah this is closed as well so we can see inside i know some bunkers is this one is open because they can actually see and shoot people if they come in so sadly this wasn't open but they are maybe renovating this making it uh, look uh, like it did before i don't know but let's not waste time here let's find another spot get inside and take a look the excitement builds up this was closed but i promise i'm gonna find one that's open so we can uh, look inside this bunker here is an old field hospital and as far as i know this is uh, full of uh, equipment from that time because i think they had uh, when it was open i think they had uh, tours here so you can actually see uh, in real real time how it looked like so with the same furniture hospital equipment and stuff like that before and during world war ii wehrmacht built several standardized bunkers and weapon position in germany and german occupied countries these buildings were called regelbau standardized buildings this building regelbau 628 was a small field hospital uh, in 2009-2010 this bunker was restored inside and supplied with authentic German hospital and sanitary equipment from World War II. Take a look at the photo here. So number one the entrance that's in here and then number two was the gas uh, lock and uh, number three uh, was uh, disinfectional material on each side and then the reception area here the ventilation room is number six number seven is the machine room number eight was the emergency preparedness room i think that this is the area where they slept uh, when uh, things uh, were calm and then we have 9a it's over here this area was for the light injuries and 9b was the area for the severe injuries uh, number 10 was the surgery room uh, yeah and number 11 not sure it doesn't say here but i guess that's uh, that one so i see the lower picture there it's the profile of the bunker Big bunker. What this was used for, I don't know. But it's a big one. I have one more light with me, so I can't bring that, but I think this is good enough. You get an impression of how it looks like. It's huge. And it still looks like it does after so many years. An old oven, a radiator oven, I think. in the old days 
Okay, at least we got inside one. Now I'm down in the hillside and I found trenches all over. This goes all the way around the area and two different posts where there are, I think there were gun posts back in the days. This is a little, maybe ammunition depot. There's another one, a little one was there, I think. Steps down. Just think the work it took to build this. And this was built by war prisoners during the occupation here. I want you to experience it, so I'm gonna bring you with me down. The steps, so small. And here they ran during the war. It's so narrow. And let's say some, someone came from above, the enemy, you didn't have a chance. There's nowhere to hide. Just run. There are different posts. In the end, you can turn left, go to a gun post there and turn right and keep going and keep going and keep going. It's insane. Yeah. Okay. Now you experienced a trench World War II style in Norway. Let's get up. I'm not sure during this video if I've been able to capture the, the emotions of this area by doing it in black and white. I'm not sure, but I'm doing my best. That trench on the other side, over the hill here, leads to this one. I think, I think this is actually ac the exit. So you can go in there and come out on the other side where I just was. But I got some expensive gear on me, so I don't want to take the chance. Oh. Yeah. This is the trench gate to the other side. I don't know what this was. It's closed. Some old cabinet. Looked like an electric cabinet. Looked like this is a a fuse box connector. There are so many bunkers and places to see here that I can't show them all in this video. There are still some old relics from the war days here. This is a flak gun, a flak anti-aircraft gun. I managed to find a little entrance here among the rocks. So low under the roof. I guess here they had ammunition. Maybe had a little nap. And here it is. The big flak. Flak anti-aircraft anti-aircraft 10.5 centimeters yeah caliber 105 700 and i don't have my glasses on 785 meter per second so it's uh quick tactical uh reach 6,000 to 10,000 meters, one officer and 10 crew. So 11 people to man this anti-aircraft machine. Hmm. Okay, see if I can get some photos.
Here is the other flag gun. Maybe I can take the mic so you can hear what I say. I think this flag gun is exactly the same. Yeah. One grenade is 24 kilos. So it's heavy. Oh, concrete, that's so good. Mm. Really felt good on the skin. This looks a little bit more modern. So I guess this is maybe a little bit in use. This looks like some old whales. Maybe that was inside the mountain here. So that is a sign of it being a big one. But from experience, from the other places I've been, the nice places, they are bolted shut, so you don't get in, sadly. But, but that's how it is. But, but, I'm getting tired. Five hours and 30 minutes I've been here now. Another one, locked. So I think this whole area inside is quite huge. This used to be filled with trees and vegetation, but for some reason they have chopped it down. I don't understand why, because it looks like, now it looks like a minefield. Before it was actually a little beautiful area with trees growing, but maybe it was trees that not, doesn't supposed to be here because they have left some trees. I don't know. The less you know. Starting to feel it after five hours walking around here and uh, I also just finished my night rotation at work. So I'm actually trying to turn around my uh, circadian rhythm today. So I'm feeling a bit tired now. But hopefully you enjoyed the video and hopefully, what the hell is that? And hopefully uh, the photos is something. At least I got some cardio in. We're gonna go that way. And we're gonna go back to the guard post where we entered when we came here. Yeah, different video. I don't care too much today. I'm just winging it. Most important for me is just to get out, spend the Saturday outside, turn my uh, rhythm to daytime, get some exercise, use my camera, and getting used to filming again because I haven't been doing that too much and I don't feel comfortable in front of the camera like I did before so I need to practice that and I need to practice to be a little bit more natural personal because I've said it since the beginning when I start filming I go into that documentary style mode yes here we are today we're gonna see like that and that's uh, that doesn't work. I think people want to see a more personal uh, view of the people they watch. Uh, I'm not sure if this was the one I showed you. No, this is another building. So we can go down there and take a quick peek and see if there is something there to look at. It looks like it's a lot of stuff inside there. See on the back of the window. Actually down here, I haven't been here before. This is a nice spot. Oh, it's like a scout uh, 
scout place. Yeah. It's for scouts, kid scouts. That's nice. It's a nice little area. You can sit and relax. Have a barbecue, campfire. And it's also, if it's a little windy, it's uh, down below a little bit. Yeah. But this also was used during the occupation. It's a nice place. Five and a half hours, I think it's enough. My feet hurts, it's too many mosquitoes. And uh, the equipment today started to mess up quite a few times. The DDI Osmo Action 4 stopped uh, videoing, it, the picture just froze. And the DDI Mic 2 suddenly just stopped uh, recording the audio. So I think it's a firmware thing, I hope. I've already uh, made a rant video, already uploaded when this video is up and uh, hopefully the issue will be fixed. So I lost a lot of footage today. I hopefully, since I uploaded this video, managed to make something out of it. And uh, now I'm walking the three kilometers back down to the car. So uh, if you like the video, if you like the photos, a little bit different, I'm trying to be a little bit more personal in my videos. And that's not always too easy, especially when you just finished your night shift rotation and your brain is uh, a capacity of, a, let's say, a mosquito. So uh, that's how that goes. Yeah. Okay. I'm going to quit before I start yabbing. Uh, as I already do and uh, hopefully I'll see you in the next video please comment below which photo you liked the, the best if anyone and uh, I'll see you in the next video my name is Chris have a nice weekend bye bye <laughs>